With the tennis ball, we're going to use that to work on our feet for a second. We did this in a previous class, and we'll show it again. So, you're going to use this guy to massage the bottom of your foot. I feel like my tarsals are spreading around the tennis ball. We're pressing into the plantar surface of the foot. I'm allowing those bones to very gently sort of slide open across joints, across muscles, across those joints, creating some open space there. If you find a very good spot, something you want to hang out in, just press. Lean in, you can hold, breathe, work through the bottom of the foot, feel your way through. We don't get a lot of attention to our feet, they're usually just stuck in shoes. Feels really nice to massage the bottom of the foot and open it up. Ah. Now, I'm going to leave the tennis ball there. I want to go back into mountain pose. I want to feel the difference between my left and right foot now. So we've generally done left side, right side, we've balanced left and right as we've gone through the practice. How does your right foot now feel compared to the left? If I had to choose, I want the rest of my body to feel like this right foot, meaning the muscle feels open, feels spacious. Uh, nothing feels jammed, and not that my left foot feels bad, it just doesn't feel as open as the right now. I'm going to switch feet, I'm going to move that into the left foot. You could do this with a lacrosse ball, a baseball, a golf ball. If you had to, you could fold a towel maybe over the golf ball so it wasn't quite so sharp. I like tennis balls as a good uh, baseline, I feel like they've got enough give to give adequate pressure without being overwhelming. Just working through the bottom of that foot, trying to see where you feel tension, where you can address it, how you're going to deliver pressure. And then I want you to have a blanket nearby. I think I'm going to change it up in a second. We're going to work on a new area. Ooh, right there in my arch. That feels tender to me. If I roll just a little bit more lateral, it feels like I'm catching a great spot on the plantar surface. If I want to move the toes and engage the foot, both shortening and lengthening that musculature, I can. Where is the spot? you want to press on. Where is that? Find a good spot. Hang out. Oh, right in there. Now I switched it up and put the ball pad of the foot down so I can lean in closer to the heel right there. Right in there. Delivering pressure into the bottoms of the feet. <sighs> and push that guy to the front of the mat. Mountain pose again. 
How do you feel? Parallel line, second toe to heel. Much better, much more balanced. Nice. I'm going to bring myself down. I'm going to move my shamrock belt out of the way. I'm going to grab a blanket here, probably uh, maybe a single layer, maybe a double layer. We'll, we'll see how this works. I'll have to try. So a lot of people have issues with their pecs. So your pec major um, attaches up and over the clavicle, down through the sternum. And this big muscle goes off towards the head of the humerus. This is what guys do bench press to build up their pec muscles, right? Then underneath that, if you feel on your shoulder here, you've got a bony knob just next to your clavicle. If you follow your collarbone over with two fingers, that middle finger is likely going to hit a little bony knob when you get to about here. That is the coracoid process. Coracoid is Greek for raven. It's like a raven's beak. So the coracoid process is actually connected to your shoulder blade. What's happening is pec minor inserts here has an origin, and then, or an assertion, I get confused. I forget which one is which on this case, but goes down to, I think, the third and fifth rib. These smaller muscles come down like this and then grab onto the rib cage. A lot of people will have tension here. To get started, what I want to do is I want to bring the tennis ball more towards my sternum. I'm going to use just palmer-based pressure here, right along my sternum. Uh, ladies in particular, you guys have lots of tension through here, lots of tissue that feels very stuck between the breasts, right along the sternum. So you can use this, and for me, I feel a spot just about here. That's the most tender so far. What I want to do is, I want to be able to lay down on this tennis ball while also saving my head and neck. So I'm going to have to lay down on my chest. I'm going to bring this guy up, and I'm going to see if this is high or low enough. I want to be able to bring my chest down, press right on that spot. And in my case, I think that's a little too high. I'm going to bring this halfway. Oh, right there. Okay. So I'm going to bring my arms down by the side. I can scoop my body up or down, depending on where I want to press. I'm below the clavicle. Oh. I can turn my head to the side if that works better. I can also, um, since it's on the left side, I can lift and move this left arm. I can move it up. Oh, right there. Okay. I'm going to Put the palm down and try to let my elbow rest there. That feels very deep to me. I'm going to lift my head, see if that changes the pressure. What happens if I turn to the left? Get a little cavitation through my cervical spine because of that. You can press anywhere in the pecs here, anywhere into that tissue. And again, I can lift this arm if I want. I can bring it up. I can bring it out to the side. It depends on what I feel. It diminished. I'm going to slowly lift my body up, and I'm going to move that tennis ball just a little lateral out towards my left shoulder. I'm still well below the collarbone. I can feel there for where my collarbone is. Ooh, right there. Ah. And turn the head to the side. Got to bring the arm down by the side. See if it feels different to me. If I prefer one or the other, I think I still prefer up. I'm going to use this right hand to balance. I'm actually going to lift this shoulder to see if I can put oh a little more pressure right into the left side of the pec. I'm getting referred pain down into my thumb and pointer finger. Just a referred sensation, kind of a dull ache. Feels like it's going through what I assume is the radial nerve. I can feel it deeply in the center of my palm, but just a little bit, in my case, towards the thumb side, not quite the center. Breathe. Oh. And 
using my back strength to go into a little bit of cobra to lift up. I'm going to move the tennis ball just a little bit more lateral. I'm going to see if that spot, oh yeah, I think that's one of the better ones so far. I'm going to bring my arm to the side. You can likely see where the tennis ball is right here. I'm still below the collarbone. I'm going to move the arm to the side. Oh, right there. Okay. See if I can rest there. If I want more pressure again, I can balance on this right hand and lift the body to turn my torso to stack on top of the tennis ball there. That's a good... Oh. Now when I lean in, I feel those ribs, and I start to feel this interesting sensation around my upper thoracic spine, underneath my shoulder blade at the very top, where people always say, oh, my upper back and my neck. But I think it's because I'm pressing on these ribs, and where the ribs insert around the sternum, they come back and around the rib cage and then up to that spot. So I'm pro likely accessing those nerves. Oh. Now, can I shimmy just a little back and forth? Ooh, that's tender. Ooh, tender. Ooh, tender, tender, tender. I'm going to, again, bring myself just a little bit into Cobra. I'm going to move the tennis ball a little bit more lateral again. Again, just below the collarbone, just below the clavicle. Where is the pressure? Is it higher? Is it lower? I had to go a little bit lower. It felt like more towards the coracoid process. I'm going to turn my head to the side because that feels comfortable. I can't take any more pressure at the moment, but I'm going to try to take a deep in-breath. Of course, if you found this too sharp, you could just fold a towel over the tennis ball. Being able to keep my head on the blanket here gives a little bit of lift, so the pressure isn't quite as extreme. Now, what happens if I ooh, lift my arm? Oh, right up here. Oh. Now, what happens if I turn the palm? Rotate the shoulder. Any change? Bring it down. Shoulder range of motion while we play with the pec. Oh, right there. Oh. That little bit of dull sensation through my thenar eminence on my left hand and through the pointer finger and thumb right in there. Now, a little bit of that cobra pose again. I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to sit up first. Just want to see how this feels. Wow. So this side just feels really, really open. Again, this side doesn't feel stuck, but now it just doesn't feel as mobile as this side does. We don't usually get a lot of sustained compression into the pecs, so I want to go ahead and switch sides. Go ahead and see if I can use the exact same setup, but now I'm going to move into the right. I'm going to take the tennis ball, try to figure out, do I feel it down below? Or we almost hit like the xiphoid process at the base of the rib cage, right along the right side of the sternum. Now, I can press through any of this. Uh, different spots along the sternum are going to have different amounts of tension. There's no judgment on where we feel it. Everybody's going to be a bit different. Where we are on the rib cage would change the angle and like vector of pressure that we deliver. And again, I get right up to the collarbone, right in here, and I start to feel a little bit more tension. I'm, I'm going to start here. And then I'm going to come forward and see if I can stack myself again to be able to deliver pressure again below the collarbone. You're not going to be able to see it on this side. Oh, very tender there. I'm going to lift the right arm and start to move it around. If I need to move my microphone, I will. Just lift that guy up, out to the side, 
And let it rest. Oh. Breathe. If I want more pressure, I can stack that left hand. Bring, ooh, bring it over. Right there. Such a sweet spot. Oh. A lot of people with upper back pain are having issues with their pec and pec minor, pulling the shoulder blades forward. This is something I educate my students about pretty consistently because I see it in 80% of the clients on any given day that we see. So I'm not going to apply any more pressure. I'm going to take the weight off. I want to lift that arm again. When I lift that guy up, I found a good spot right there. So I want to relax for a minute and see if I can hang out and breathe in that spot. Uh... Again, <clears throat> this time it's a little more broad in the center of my palm, but I'm getting more activity along the pointer finger and the thumb, along the radial nerve here. Uh, lift the arm and bring it out to my side. And in this case, I'm going to lift my shoulder, roll the tennis ball just a little further laterally. I'm still well below the collarbone. I'm going to see if I can find another good spot. And yeah, right there. If I want more pressure, I can always use that left hand to stack that left shoulder blade a little more onto the right. I can turn my head to the side, and be able to stack some body weight right into the tennis ball right there. Again, that interesting referred pain. This time it's starting to get a little bit to the middle finger and the ring finger as well. <sighs> Very tender. Exquisitely tender. Not painful, doesn't make me want to run away. But I couldn't deliver more pressure than this without having to tighten muscles. I'm going to slowly back off. I'm going to cobra myself to lift up. I'm going to move the tennis ball again just a little bit more lateral. I can go higher. I can go lower. Where do you want to feel the pressure? What feels good to you? I kind of like where the tennis ball is right there. I'm going to find a spot for my right hand. And then I want to lift that left shoulder onto, ooh, right there. Kind of an interesting referred pain. Like it, it starts to have a sensation that refers down, I think, towards my armpit. There's this little wrap uh, down from where the tennis ball is pressing in down towards my axillary region. What happens if I engage that right hand and lift it up and move it? I bumped into my microphone there. And yeah, I think down below it feels better to me. I'm going to lift that left shoulder again, just a little more pressure. I moved just a little bit more laterally. I felt like I wanted more pressure, a little bit more lateral. Right in there. Ah. Ah. And 
taking pressure off. I'm going to engage that little bit of cobra, right? Just so I can lift the torso and bring that up. I want to bring myself up to seated. I want to see how that feels now that I've worked a little bit through both sides of the chest. This side all of a sudden feels just very pronounced and open. I have a tendency, because I have more pain on this left side, to work on the left side, but I'll often find myself surprised at how much tension I'll feel on this right side because it doesn't get as much TLC. Now, I can press all through my pecs here. If I don't want to use my fingers, I can use the tennis ball again. I can go back into any of these spots and maintain some pressure. If you're putting pressure into the pec, you want to be able to feel like your head is uh, stacked in a way that's not compromising your neck. You want to put yourself in a position where you can completely comfortably relax and breathe. And you want to be able to stimulate that area to send that signal into your nervous system to see if you can get those muscles to relax and let go. If you have a tennis ball, go ahead and put it aside. I mean, I'm sorry. If you have a foam roll, go ahead and grab your foam roll. If you don't have a foam roll, you can take your blankets. You can actually double them up or your towels. I want you to roll them up uh, good and snug and tight into a solid roll. And we're going to use this as support for your neck. I like the foam roll because it's got a certain firmness that I think works better for this. So I'm going to grab the foam roll and check our cameras here, see where we are at. Yeah, go ahead and restart.